my name is Kay Howe. I also work at the Jarvie Lab. I've been here working on rat lungworms since 2011 with Dr. Jarvie. Um, some of my studies have included looking at infection in slugs and snails um, and also looking at um, what happens when slugs and snails drown in water. So today I'm going to show you how we start the process of looking at a slug or snail to see if it's infected. They're nice and frozen and easy to work on. Little slug sickles. So that's a humane way of, of uh, terminating their life is to put them in the freezer. It also kills any rat lungworm that they might be harboring. And so it makes them much safer for us to work on if they're frozen. So when we bring a sample into the lab, we put them in a Ziploc baggie. We'll generally label the bag with the date and where it was captured, and we put it into the freezer for at least 24 hours. They're also much easier to work on if they're frozen because obviously they're not moving. So I have uh, here a couple samples. Um, a slug and a snail, and the process is a little different for both. Um, and they've been in the freezer, so now we're ready to process them. When we bring a slug or snail ready for the tissue processing part, we enter that uh, animal into our RLW uh, log. We put down the date that the sample was collected the date that we're going to actually process the tissue, and then we go through a couple of steps. First one being that we're going to weigh our tubes, which we have labeled here with an identification number, um, and also the abbreviation of the species name. So we want to um, weigh the tubes so that when we take a piece of the tissue from the slug, we can know what the weight of the tissue is. Um, depending upon whether we want to know approximately how many larvae might be in the tissue, um, knowing the weight of the sample is very important. If we run what's called a quantitative or a qPCR, we can approximate about how many larvae there would be per milligram of tissue. So knowing how much that sample weighs is, is important. If we just want a yes or no, the sample weight is not that important. So the first thing we're going to do is weigh our tube with nothing in it and see how much our tube weighs. So we have two tubes. Um, we have a tube A and a tube B for each one of our samples. Tube B will become an archive. It'll simply go into the freezer after the tissue is in it with uh, the liquid, the lysis buffer that um, preserves it. And that will be held in the freezer in case we ever want to look at that particular sample again. So we weigh both tubes and record the weight. And this scale is very sensitive. So 1.032, and now I'll weigh tube B. Make sure it balances back to zero before I put it on. Um, if it's not quite at zero, then I tear the scale to have it all balanced out to the zeros. One zero four, one point zero four eight. Okay, now we're ready to take our tissue sample. Okay, so now we're ready to take our tissue sample. Some of the tools that I'm using are forceps, a scalpel. I have a beaker with a bleach water solution and fresh water solution. Um, and you'll notice I'm not wearing a mask and that's because these were frozen. It's rendered any parasite that might be in it harmless. And so if these were live slugs, I would be wearing a mask, I would of course be wearing my glasses, and I would be working under our hood, which is a safe zone to work. But because these were frozen, and they've been frozen for about a week now, um, we know that any parasites that are in them are uh, rendered harmless and would be dead. And so I'm able to work at a bench and uh, don't need to wear a mask. So that's a uh, good precaution when working with these um, animals is to freeze them 
And now what we're going to do is take a little bit of tail tissue and also a little bit of mantle tissue. Um, this is the tail of the slug here. And the mantle is up in this area. The reason we take from two areas is to avoid a false negative. By sampling from just one area, researchers have found that you could get a false negative. So we take from a couple areas now. Another nice thing about freezing is that it does often make it easier to take the tissue. It's a little easier to cut from a frozen slug than from one that's a little rubbery. And this one has been out of the freezer for a few minutes and thawing out a little bit. So I'll cut these both in half and put part in tube A and part in tube B. And we're aiming again for about a 25 milligram piece, which is a fairly small piece of tissue. Take our tube, open it up, and a little piece of the tail tissue will go in, and a little piece of the mantle tissue will go in. A little bit in each tube. And they're sometimes a little sticky and hard to get off, but generally you can get them in there and push them down a little. And pretty soon we'll add the lysis buffer. Now the other nice thing about freezing the slug is um, because it's rendered harmless, um, I can simply put it back in the bag and dispose of it in the regular garbage. If this were a live slug, we would need to autoclave the bag to make sure that we killed any, any parasites. Um, so by simply freezing it, it allows us to make the organism harmless and then we can just dispose of it. And then we will soak our tools in the bleach, dispose of the blade. And then what we do to preserve the DNA so that the DNA doesn't degrade, uh, we add DNA um, lysis buffer to the tubes. And this will uh, preserve the DNA so that when we want to go back and do our molecular analysis, um, our DNA has been preserved and we'll be able to see it. So um, this is the buffer ATL, tissue lysis buffer. And we are going to add 180 uh, milligrams, 180 micrograms. So this is our pipette set at 180 microliters, I should say. I'm sorry. Um, and we're going to add 180 microliters to each of the tubes. The important thing when you're working with uh, organisms and you're wanting to preserve the DNA and be able to look to see if the um, if the sample is contaminated is to avoid cross-contamination. So as I'm putting this uh, lysis buffer in, I hold above the tube so I'm not touching anything inside of the tube. And then I can reuse the tip for the next one. And then we snap the lids on and we're ready to move on to our next sample. Okay, so now we've weighed our tubes. We'll give our tools a fresh water rinse. Now this is a snail that we're going to be doing this time. So the, the um, technique is a little different. This is a European garden snail, the Cornu aspersum. The slug that we did is Lamania valentiana, the three-banded garden slug. And for this one, we will use our hammer to crack the shell a little bit. And now we need to remove the shell. 
which can take a little bit of time to make sure you get it all. What you're wanting to do is anything that would not digest when we do our digestion, we want to get rid of anything that is not going to be tissue that would not digest because it um, will cause problems in the DNA extraction part of the process. So you want to move, remove all of the shell. Sometimes you have to kind of poke around a little bit to make sure that you have it all. The shell of the snail hides the organs um, and the, what's called the mantle, which is um, where the, um, the blood of the snail is. So you can kind of see on this, you still see the outline of the shell. And you have to kind of feel around a little bit, make sure that you got all of the shell. There can be little bits and pieces of it. And you don't want those to interfere with your digestion process. And for this, we'll be taking some of the mantle, which is this folded area here. Often in um, the snails, the mantle will have the parasite, whereas in the slug, the tail tissue tends to have it. So we will take some of the mantle, getting some of this out of the way. And we'll take a little from the foot as well. Again, taking our tubes, the A and B tube. So we're going for a piece of tissue, fairly small. Now we want to weigh the tube again with the sample in it so that we can determine what the sample weight is. 1.127. back to the bench. So our sample weight is 0 0.087. And now we just clean up and put the organism back in the bag. Put our tools back in the bleach. The bleach water will destroy any DNA. And the last step, you want to make sure everything's in the lysis buffer. So you want to tap it a little bit. Get everything down in there. And sometimes you might need to push it down in there a little bit. And because this is the, from the same organism, I don't need to rinse my forceps in between. And that is extraction of the tissue. So from here now, we will move on to the digest. So this is the digest part. We've added the enzymes that will lyse the cells, break them open to release the DNA. Uh, we put them in the incubator after we add the enzyme, um, put it in overnight, gentle rocking motion, and the tissue will digest and it'll be ready for the next step, which is the DNA extraction.